right, so now we've, uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can actually add code to a universal application and share the code between a Windows 8 and a Windows Phone application. One of the great new things we can do inside Visual Studio 2013. So I've created my universal app project. I've chosen C Sharp as my programming language. And what I have now is my three projects, Windows, Windows Phone, and Universal Apps Shared. So let's start off by creating our, editing our Windows 8 application. And sure enough, if you expand that Windows 8 application, you're going to see it has a main page.xaml. The XAML page is, of course, in a C Sharp project, how you define the UI for your application. So I can go here, and I'm just going to create the very basic Hello World. I'm just going to close a few extra windows. I can take a button, and I can drag it over to my form, and then I can go ahead and maybe add a uh, text block to display a message on the screen when I click on the button. Nothing too fancy here. I'm just going to go and set the properties for that button. And I'm going to call this button click me. And then I'm going to change the content of that button to say click me. So that I see that on the button itself as a label. And then for my text block, I'm just going to rename that text message. And initially the text message is going to be uh, display a message here. So right now all I have is a Windows 8 application with one button and one label. Now if I want to tell the application that when I click on the button to change the message, the standard sort of hello world logic, I'm just going to go to the C sharp code by double clicking on the button. It creates a click event for that button and I can go ahead and say change the property of text message change the text property to hello uh, world. And if I would just click to start running my application with the debugger, it's going to go ahead and launch the application on my machine. And hopefully we're going to see a button appear that says click me. And when I click on that button, we can see the message hello world displayed. So nothing groundbreaking here. All I've really done is gone ahead and created a Windows 8 application. But the whole point of this is this is meant to be a universal application. So I want to be able to create Windows 8 and Windows Phone applications within the same solution. Well, if I now go and expand the Windows Phone project, you will notice a separate main page.xaml for the Windows Phone. Now, you may be thinking, hey, wait a second, I thought this was a universal application. Um, why would I need to write the code twice? And sure enough, if you do double click on that main page.xaml, for Windows Phone, it is a separate file that defines the UI for your Windows 8 project and the UI for your Windows Phone project. That is deliberate. You do need to define the code separately. The layout's not going to be exactly the same for Phone and Windows 8. There's still controls that you can use on Windows Phone that don't exist on Windows 8. For example, the pivot control. Um, so you can go here and you can start dragging and dropping controls. If you are using things like the button control or the text blocks control that do exist in both, well, you can be a lazy coder. I mean, we all have been known to do this from time to time. I can go here and copy the XAML code from my button and my text block, and I can then go paste it inside the grid for my Windows form. Of course, when it appears on the screen, it's going to be, uh, the position's going to be a bit off. It's hard to see it because it's kind of off the screen. Uh, so I'm just going to change the uh, location here in terms of uh, the left. You can see a margin of uh, 442 is not showing up too well, so if I just change that to 0, 0, and then I can see the button and I can reposition it to where I want. And I'm just going to change the position of my text block to 0, 0. So again, I can also just take that and drag it to where I want it to appear. So yes, you do have two separate files for the UI of your Windows 8 and Windows Phone applications. Some of the XAML you can copy and paste, but of course you're going to have to maintain it separately. So that's not massively different from what we had in the past when we worked with our applications in two separate projects. And once again, uh, if I want to write logic to change the message, just double click on the button to add an event handler, and I can just say change text message, text property, to be hello. Now, of course, if I hit run again, it's just going to run the Windows 8 project. One of the things I need to do is I'm going to need to make sure that I change the startup project to be the Windows Phone project. That way I can see how my Windows Phone project is looking when I'm running. So you can just change which project is used as a startup whenever you launch the debugger. So now the emulator is launching 
and it's going to load my application and run. Of course, it takes a, um, about a minute for the emulator to launch the very first time because it isn't already up and running. Uh, but once the emulator is up and launched, then it will launch my application. Coming up now, there's my splash screen. And when I click on the button, sure enough, it changes the message to hello. Don't forget, of course, when you are finished debugging, uh, don't close the emulator. Just hit the stop debugging button. And that way, the next time you launch your Windows Phone app, it'll launch a little quicker. Just those little things make life easier. But what I really want to highlight now is how do I share code between the Windows 8 and Windows Phone applications? Because so far, all the code I've written has been specific to the Windows 8 app or the Windows Phone app. But the whole point of Universal Apps is to have shared code. So what I can do is go to the shared project and I can add, for example, a new class. So any backend code you can add here. So I'm going to go ahead, add a new item, and I'm going to add a brand new class called shared code. Very complicated class names, I know. And I'm going to make this a public class because I want to be able to access it from both the Windows 8 and Windows Phone app. And I'm actually going to make it uh, static as well because I'm just making a little utility method here. Uh, that has nothing to do with being shared, it's just a matter of uh, an easy way to call my code. And then I'm going to create a public static uh, method that returns a string. So I'm going to write a method that returns the message I want to display in my application. And of course, later on, I might have more complicated logic that said, what language do you want the message in? Um, maybe display the person's name or change colors and things, depending on what choices they've got on what settings they've got in Windows 8 or Windows Phone. So I'm going to start off with a public static string called um, what message. And when you call that method, it's going to return um, hello. Uh, this is a shared message. That's a nice simple one. Then we'll know that's working. And then what we can do is we can change the code inside our Windows 8 application and inside our Windows Phone application. And instead of just displaying a hard coded message, we can tell it display the text in shared code dot what message. So we're just going to call our method in the class from both the Windows Phone application and from the Windows 8 application. So once again, call shared code dot what message. When I run, first I'm going to run the Windows Phone version of my application. Now you are going to notice, first of all, it launches more quickly because the emulator was already running. When I hit click me, we can now see that the shared message is displayed. And more importantly, we can also see that if we go and change the startup project back to Windows 8, and we run that project again, we're going to see the same shared message displayed for Windows 8 or Windows Phone. So the great thing is now, obviously, if we need to change any of the logic that determines a message that's going to be displayed, we only need to change it once, and it will work in both our Windows 8 and Windows Phone applications. Very similar to what we did before with portable class libraries, but just a simpler implementation, less work for us as developers. We don't have to go in adding references back and forth between the projects or any of that. Now, if you want to get fancy, because there might be times where you're writing code that is specific to Windows 8 or is specific to Windows Phone, you can also add conditional if statements. So I can say, if this is a Windows Phone application, then maybe I want to return a message that says, this is a phone message. Whereas, sorry, just adding my end if here. Apparently, I can't type today. And if it's a Windows app, then I'm going to return a message that says this is a Windows message. So one of the neat things that you can do is even though the code is shared, you can use these conditional if statements to have code that only executes for the Windows Phone app or the Windows 8 application. So now if I go ahead and run my Windows 8 application again, we should see a different message, Windows specific, even though the code that we called was the same. So these conditional if statements allow us to share code, so we only have to maintain it in one place, and yet we can still have code that executes differently for Windows 8 
and for Windows Phone. So I'm just going to execute it on Windows Phone. So you can see that the message appears differently for the Windows Phone application. And there's our, this is a phone message. You might have also noticed that inside the editor, the text here, return this is a phone message, is grayed out. That's because uh, right now in the debugger, there's a little list box in the top left corner, and it says myuniversalapp.windows. What that means is it's using the color coding of Visual Studio to show me the active code for my Windows app. If I change that to select Windows Phone, then now the Windows Phone code is highlighted. So it's just a visual cue for when we're coding to remember that we have code that is only applicable to one application or the other. So there you go. Hope you found that helpful. Now you know how to add code that can be shared across a Windows 8 and Windows Phone app using uh, both conditional if statements and using the new universal app type in Visual Studio 2013.